Hello, people of God. It's Pastor Stephen with vlog 265 for Thursday, January 26th, and I am in the workroom. And look at this. We have work going on. And uh, Diane, what are you guys doing right now? Well, right now we are getting, we are preparing the letters to go out that will contain our usual stewardship letter, as well as the financial statements that will be needed for your Great. end of the year. And I'm recording this Wednesday morning, so we have Pete here. And for years, you've been on consistory with, uh, what, what's your position exactly? The treasurer. The treasurer. <laughs> Lifetime position. And also our accountant, uh, I keep on moving there, Sarah. This is where Sarah is usually working, and she's working on W-2s right now, so she needs to be focused. But there's a lot going on in here. I just wanted to say hi since we're starting with that. But I'm going to ask you, can you read my lips? Can you read my lips? Have you noticed sometimes when you're watching football games uh, with the NFL that the coaches often will have their play sheet in front of their face. What are they doing? Well, they're protecting their secrets. And uh, there is a whole history. A lot of them will be wearing headsets. And in the early days of doing that, when they would wear headsets so that they can um, send their calls to the quarterback or to their defensive coordinator. When they did that, um, anybody that was in the stands or anyone from the opposing team could just, um, they could uh, bring a scanner and find the frequency and they could listen in and find out what they were calling. So technology has gotten more sophisticated since then and you can't just listen in to what they're saying to their players the way that you can actually in NASCAR, you can listen in and, and hear what they're saying from the pit to their drivers and kind of listen in. And sometimes the, the recording or the, um, the show will, will share a little bit of that with you. It makes it a little bit more interesting, but uh, you don't want people to be able to read your lips if you're doing a call. Think about how much money well, how much money the tickets cost. I just saw something about that for uh, the Eagles game coming up. And, man, they close really quickly, so then there's resale. Think about how much money the players are paid. Would it cost very much to have a lip reader, maybe a deaf person, with binoculars in the um, up in the stands to watch, to see if you can tell what the... The next play is going to be wouldn't that be a great advantage even one or two times if you saw a coach say we're gonna run you know, red 43 z29 and if you happen to know what that was then uh, and somehow you could quickly radio that to your team and they could say okay get ready for the z29 whatever that is well you're not going to know most of the, the names of the, the plays. When I played in, in uh, high school football, you know, we had our own code. And um, in fact, there was, as an offensive lineman, I, I played uh, tackle and when, uh, uh, right offensive tackle. And we had, uh, with the cadence, when the quarterback called red, set, hike, hike, in between that, between red and set, I would call out a word or a number. And about one out of three times, that was a one word call that would let the, the tackle, uh, I'm sorry, the, the end on one side of me and the guard on the other and maybe the center, it would let them know what way we were gonna block. So as I was walking out to the line, I'd look at where the defense is lined up and I would um, assess it. And I had two or three options, depending on what the play was to, to call. And so it'd be red like 42 or red um, 60, whatever. We had a bunch of calls. And sometimes if it was a pass, that meant nothing. Sometimes if the play was going to the other side, it meant nothing. But I was still supposed to call that. And it's, so it was a signal to two or three of my other uh, teammates and the defense was listening. I remember one time when I called something I'd just called and the guy on the opposing team said, oh, they're gonna run such and such, they're gonna run such and such. And inside I was thinking, no, we're not, but you think we are because we're doing that. And I realized how important it was for me to scramble those when we weren't actually doing it so they had no idea what our code meant. Well, it's kind of the same with, uh, <laughs> it's much more the same with uh, the NFL. They have all sorts of codes, but if you can crack the code 
and uh, figure it out, wouldn't that give you an advantage? Turns out what really happens now is that they will watch the game afterwards and they will also have a camera or, or at least uh, watch replays of the coaches. And if they can see what they say and they have a lip reader that can figure it out, then, uh, oh man, I can't believe I've spent so much time talking about lip reading. Uh, then uh, um, they can watch it later and sync up when they say blah, 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 that means such and such, then maybe the next time they're, uh, and, and then they watch the play, the next time they play that team, now they know some of their plays and they've decoded a little bit of it. That's a lot of work and you might only crack the code on one or two plays, but it still can give you an advantage. So that's what's going on with that. Well, I just talked on the front page of the Stephen Says in our February newsletter, which may not be online yet. We're having some technical difficulties getting that worked out. Um, in that, I talked about a permission-giving church. Hello, Emily. Emily is just getting here. We just found out that because of the bad weather, there's going to be uh, uh, an early dismissal at the school. So Emily has been called in. I know she's been at court with her internship with social work and uh, I guess she got cleared. So she is gonna join our forces with our after school program, which after school starts at 10.30 uh, on this Wednesday morning. Anyway, I talked about a permission giving church and I'm gonna talk more about that later. But as I was looking it up, this has been a concept I've thought about for quite a while, that a church allows people that wanna do a ministry to go ahead and do it. You don't have to go through all sorts of checks and balances and check with this committee and get permission. A permission getting, giving church is like, well, that connects with our ministry. That's part of what we're doing. So um, there she is, There's, there goes Emily going in. Um, and I forgot where I learned that, so I did a little research. It turned out it was from a book I were, read a long time ago called Sacred Cows Make Gourmet Burgers. It's a great title that really grabbed me. Um, Ministry Anytime, Anywhere, By Anyone. And it's by Bill Easom, uh, who recently retired, uh, but he's written over 20 books about ministry. And they really kind of excited me and stirred me. And I'm in a new place where I'm getting excited about that because of our natural church development. And just yesterday, I hosted a community of practice for my first time for this, uh, that we just started this year with other pastors and I'm leading a group or facilitating a group where we're talking about church growth and development and especially church health and uh, the distinction uh, between a church where one person at the top calls the plays and uh, tells the quarterback what to do and everybody has to follow the one person it's different in basketball or in soccer where everybody knows the game plan everybody knows um, how to work together and you've practiced and you make split second decisions, who you're gonna pass the ball to, how you're gonna, what you're gonna do in soccer and basketball. And that is more of what a healthy church ought to be like, that uh, everybody is mobilized for ministry and it isn't, well, you better check with so-and-so and what does is, what is the bishop say and then what does the pastor say? Um, we're just getting freed for ministry and, and to do what what God calls us to do with the gifts we have and with the insights and the position where we are and what's going on. So that's what permission giving church is from. And it's not about uh, the, the, the calls being uh, made by just one person. All right. I hope you can make a little bit of sense of that and what I'm talking about. Um, our scripture for today is what I will be preaching on this Sunday from 1 Corinthians 1, 23 and 24. The Apostle Paul said to the Corinthians, We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. We're going to unpack that a little bit Sunday. What does it mean to preach Christ crucified? And that's who I purport to preach, and I hope you do in the way that you share your faith. And um, for our prayers, I want to pray for our deacons and elders. They had a meeting just last night called by Martha Sittler, who when she was asked to be a deacon, and they said, well, you don't really have to do much to show up for meetings. She said, 
<laughs> bullpucky. I want to be a part of what is going on in the church. And uh, so she is, she is a spark plug making that happen. And I thank the elders and deacons that met and Carrie Coon for joining them and sharing some insights. There are good things happening as people are mobilized for ministry, permission giving church, uh, church moving toward greater health and activity. I just love it. This is a great time to be a part of St. Paul's and uh, let's pray for them. Lord God, we pray for the deacons and elders who have said yes to your call. Yes, Lord, yes. And who are stepping up to ministry and who are putting their heads together and seeking where you are calling them. We pray for a church that becomes stronger and healthier and more mobilized to do your work for the kingdom of God. We thank you for the opportunity to move in this way. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'll sing a little bit of uh, uh, our closing hymn. No, it's not our closing hymn. In I'm not sure where it is. It's going to be one of our hymns this um, this Sunday. It was written by Michael W. Smith, and some it's sort of a hymn, and it's sort of a, a contemporary uh, worship song. It was written by Michael W. Smith. Great is the Lord. He is holy and just. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord. He is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord. Now lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. I know I went out of tune. Great is the Lord. Oh man, I went way out of tune. Forgive me. Um, that is the end of vlog 265.